AI changes your text into image. AI extends your image. AI fills in the blank in your image. AI changes your face in a portrait. AI changes your 3D model into an image. AI changes the text into an editable template. Have a conversation with AI and edit your image. AI changes your text into vectors that you can actually edit. AI combines different photos into one seamless photo. AI takes in color condition image and makes more images based on that. And AI upscales your blurry images. These are all the things that Adobe's new AI Firefly is claiming to be working on, which got me thinking, what we'll replace a lot of designers? So I'm not gonna lie guys, I have been waiting for the beta access for a very long time and I was really excited to actually get it. Um, so I wanna take you guys with me on this journey to take a look at what this thing is and what it offers and what might be better than some of the other AIs and how we can use it for what we're using. So all the ones that I was talking about in the beginning with inpainting, personalized results, text to vectors are things that Adobe are working on. Uh, but if we scroll back up to the top, we can see that the three are actually available to us right now are text to image, text effects, and recolor vectors. Now, these are really cool, and you'll notice that Adobe Firefly is actually web based. So it's more similar to DALI E rather than something like Mid Journey, but this has its pros and cons. So we'll explore some of these and whether or not this can do a lot of the jobs of the designers of today, you guys let me know. Let me know what kind of designer you are and what you think about all the crazy AI that's coming in and if it'll help you in your workflow or if it'll simply replace you. But let's get into the first one, which is text to image. Text to image is the one that everybody is familiar with. It's basically giving it a prompt and it generating an image for you. Now, the thing that I like about Adobe's Firefly is that when you hover over the image, it'll actually tell you what the prompt was in order to generate this image. Now, what you can do is actually, you can try the prompt yourself and you can basically edit what is going on here. Now, in order to put in your own prompt, you go down to the bottom, it says describe the image you want to generate English only. And let's do something that I think will be useful for, I don't know, clients. So let's try to do something like a logo. For example, if I want to do a uh, clean contemporary logo on white background for, let's say it's Superman's lawyers because I bet Superman runs into a lot of legal trouble and we want to make a logo for Superman's lawyers. So as you guys are familiar with, it's going to spit out four different images for us. And you can already tell that this is a lot more user-friendly than some of the other ones. I think personally, it's a little bit more user-friendly than DALI, and it's a lot more user-friendly than what is going on with Midjourney. However, you can tell that it is not super good with letters and words, similar to some of the other AI. But what I really like is you don't have to actually give it the style and the prompt. On the right here, we can adjust things like content type, we can adjust its aspect ratio, and we can adjust the styles as well as color and tone. So for example, if I want to have a logo that is not like art style, but rather a graphic style, I can simply click on that and it'll regenerate the four images for me, which is really cool. And I can also change it to things like if I want the color and tone to be more muted color, if I want it to have studio lighting, and if I want the composition to be something like a close up, then I can do that. Now, these probably don't apply to something like a logo, but you guys can see how this is going to be super useful in creating something like this. Now, you can see that all of the, the filters or all of the options that I've chosen has popped up in the bottom where I have my prompt. If I click generate again, it's going to basically generate my logos, but with everything considered. So you can see that it's dramatically changed what was going on with my four images. Say for example, we want to make a variation of this guy. What we can do is click on this and we can actually just hover over this little wavy thing and you can actually make iterations of this just by clicking the show similar button. 
Now, if we actually hover over the top here, you can see there's three dots as well as a download button. If we click into the three dots, you can submit this to the Firefly Gallery, which is similar to what we saw in the very beginning of this video, where you can basically iterate on other people's prompts. You can also use this as a reference image and copy to your clipboard. Let's explore this for a little bit. If I use this as a reference image, you can see that with the same prompt, it's going to generate different images. Now, obviously you can also change the prompt based on this image. For example, if you wanna change the color, you can do that. But this is a great way to use these as a reference image and you can change out the different reference images and it'll still give you basically this prompt, but with this reference image in mind, which is super cool. The thing with Adobe Firefly that is interesting and a little bit different from some of the other ones is when we hit download, it's going to tell you about transparency and AI, and it's going to tell you about content credentials. Content credentials based off of Adobe's website is a set of editing history and attribution details associated with content that can be included with that content at export or at download. It's basically like a watermark for your AI drawing because with all of the AI drawing that's pouring into the world today, it's hard to kind of distinguish between what is generated by AI and what has been done by an artist. Now, an interesting thing that you can see is after I click continue and this helps me download the image, it's going to have a really big watermark at the bottom left corner of the image that we generated. And this is basically Adobe Firefly in its beta or testing version. None of the images is for commercial use. Hopefully it, this is not something that will still be there when Adobe Firefly is officially released. But for now, just know that that is exactly what we're working with. Now let's hop into text effects. So if I click into text effects, it's basically going to make something like a text and add a super, super cool effect onto it. So I'll show you guys what I mean. If I want to spice up LYH Studio and have a new channel banner, I can do that. And if I want the text to be dripping with chocolate, if I hit generate here, it's going to basically take the text, have it here, and it's going to drip it with chocolate. You can already tell that this is a super cool feature if you want to do anything with typography, but there are also a lot of customizations that you can do. So on the right, there are sample effects. These are probably the ones that work the best uh, according to what the AI has done. And you can also change the text fit. Now, right now it's on the medium. And what this basically means is if I change it to a tight fit, that means the AI is going to generate effects that are a lot more respective of what the boundaries of my text is. So you can see that everything is more confined to the LYH Studio text. If I change it to a loose fit, you can see that the boundaries of the text won't be respected as much. You will have chocolate flying uh, basically off of the letters or the confines of the letters. Now you can also change things like the font, obviously, and you can also change things like the background color and the text color. So if I change the background color, you can see that there is a lot of things that you can play around with and you can also change things like the text color. Now. On the bottom, there are four different variations based on the prompt that you typed it. And you can obviously change this along with your other text effect fits, as well as your font and your background color to basically come up with one that you actually like. Now, similar to the image generating, you can also submit this to a Firefly gallery. You can clip it to a clipboard. And once again, if you try to download this, it's going to give you that same watermark on the bottom left corner. The last one we're exploring is recolor vectors. If I go into generate, and I'm just gonna use Sakura in the snow as an example here. But basically what we're trying to do is recolor this vector image that we upload right here into other colors that the AI has basically uh, interpreted based on our prompt. So for example, if I want something like edgy colors for a ninja school, it'll be able to take that and generate some colors for us that we can actually use. Now, if I hover over any of these images, it will tell me what the prominent colors are. And I can actually switch these up until I find one that I like more than what they're showing me up top here. On the right, we have sample prompts. We have things like harmony. Now, if you scroll through this, you can change all of these to things like complementary color. You can change it to analogous color. This is all up to you to basically play around with. And 
If you click the options, we can only have the option to copy to a clipboard. And of course, if you download this, you will be given an SVG file, which is great. It's a file that you can edit. I think Adobe Firefly is great. I think it does a really good job of making AI user-friendly so that anybody can add it into their workflow. I'm really, really super excited for its integration with some of their native apps like Photoshop, like Illustrator, and basically using this as a tool to augment our workflow as designer. With that said, I don't think it will be able to replace the human mind anytime soon, um, but I'm really excited for what it'll bring for us in the future for us to use in order to actually generate things that we want. Now, with that said, I don't think there has been a more exciting time to actually become something in the visual design field, whether you wanna be an architect, whether you wanna be a graphic designer. I think AI is making a lot of things possible that wasn't possible before to augment your workflow. Now, if you want to get into Adobe, I have a link down in the description where you can get the Adobe Suites. And if you're a student, that's even better because you get 60% off the entire Adobe suite. And make sure you always go for the annual subscription because it saves you a lot of money. Some of the things that I noticed with just playing around with Adobe Firefly are things like, it gets a little bit laggy sometimes when I make multiple images. Uh, it sometimes crashes. I have to reload everything, type in the prompts, go through my workflow once again. There are also times where I find myself making image and seeing things that are not quite resolved, whether it be, you know, the corner or edge of a building or the roots of a tree. But sometimes I can see that it doesn't really have a resolution for some of these finer details and some of these images that are being generated. Now, obviously, uh, Firefly is in beta, so I don't really blame them for having stuff like that. But if things like this can be optimized in the future, it's going to be an amazing tool. Also, with some of the things that we talked about in the beginning, things like 3D model to uh, image or things like text to vector are things that I'm super, super looking forward to just because this will make our workflow so much easier. Think of all the possibilities. You want to do some sort of vector that you can edit. You can basically tell us what to give you and it'll spit that out for you. You can edit it. You can iterate on that. It's going to be a great tool. I don't see any other... AI that's doing that right now, correct me if I'm wrong, but these are some of the things that I think are super cool that can be incorporated into things like Illustrator, into things like InDesign that'll really spice up our workflow as designers and augment what we're trying to do in our everyday lives. But that's enough talking for me. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of Adobe Firefly, what you'll be using it for. And if you guys have learned anything, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one.